Hey everyone, it's Mike and Raven, and we're about to do a narrative play now for Warcry. Yeah, we did a little open play tutorial mission before. We did, we did. So now we're gonna try doing the narrative way of playing it. Right. You could build up your warband and get bigger and get monsters and scrolls and do different quests and get different items and make your guys stronger too. Yeah, and there's they don't call them bases on here, but encampments and stuff. And yeah, I think it's gonna be neat. So it plays like we did before that you can have. The least amount is three miniatures or 15. Right. And you have to have at least one hero. You can't have... Actually, you can't have more than one hero at the start. When you make your roster for narrative, you can only have one hero. So I have my Wither Lord and you have your Alpha. Yeah. And when you pick your hero, you give them a heroic trait at the start. So my heroic trait I picked was Resourceful. So I get one wild dice at the start of the battle. And what one did you pick? And what? my heroic trait is Skilled Commander... And once per battle, I can use Inspiring Presence because of that. And then they get a level. Every time you get a level of renown, you can do a quest to get more hero traits too. Right. And there's a bunch of different quests in the book, the core book, or if you have the Rod and Ruin book or the Sundered Fate book that comes with it, there's missions for the warbands there too. Yeah, lots of options. Very cool. Yeah. So the first thing they tell you to do is choose your facts and the fighters. So I picked the Rottmeyer Creed and my leaders there. So I got... The same warband I had when we played our tutorial mission. Right. And it's 965. I can't get any more points. And then you picked... I have the Horns of Hash Hut with the Alpha. And it's the same one from the tutorial mission we did. So it is exactly 1,000 points. So we picked those. We gave them heroic traits, which we just described before. Yep. Then they say pick your leader's heroic traits. That was two we did. Then you choose your first quest. So in the book or the... A uh, Heart of Nur book that comes with Rod and Ruin or the Sundered Fate one. Yeah. There's quests in there too. So I picked my quest is Fruits of Dark Alchemy. So that's my quest to do. So I can try to fulfill the quest and then I get items for doing it too. So the one that I get is a Staff of Rottmeyer. And then if I finish the quest, I'll get plus one move, plus one toughness on my guy too. And then once you finish your quest, you can pick other quests in the book and build up your warband that way too. And you get glory and renown, and you can build bases in that way, too. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff. And what quest did you pick for your guys? I picked uh, Infernal Rewards. And if I complete the quest, I picked to be able to get Brazen Van Braces, which adds two to the toughness characteristic of the bearer. Yeah, And you can give so. that to anyone. You just don't have to give it to the leader. Right. So that'd be pretty crazy on your guys with strong toughness. That's what I was thinking. So... We did the quest, and then the Finnessy Tustage is encampment location. So at the very start, you have to pick the outskirts. So we're just on the edges of the map now of Narwhal. And then you can do quests later on, or you go, you send out your fighters, and they can find other encampments for you, and you get more points that way, and we're down too. Right. And can find artifacts and look for them. Uh, what's the other thing? Yeah, and then this one... Oh, yeah, you have to check sometimes that you're... Uh, and can't make can get threatened or compromised, so you actually have to defend your base, or you can actually lose your base if you're not too careful. Cool. And then the Warband's Glory, we don't have any yet. If you win, you get Glory, and that's what you use to buy more fighters or monsters or allies to your Warband, too. Yeah. And there's a reputation, so depending how strong your Warband is, you have a certain amount of rep. And that says, like, I we're, we both start at two reputation, because you're Hero and you're Renown. So if we play another warband, and once we're built out, if we're at four and we start with the Jade Obelisk, and they're only at two, they get benefits for playing as the underdog, too, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Like, you get more wild dice, or if you win, you get more glory, too, for fighting someone that's stronger than you. Yeah, which is very cool. So I think we'll play out the, some of the campaign with these two warbands, and we'll start the one with the Sundered Fate warbands, too. Yeah. And maybe we'll do a crossover mission where we'll fight against each other and stuff, too. I think that's a good idea. Another cool thing that they had in the back of the book, which I thought was kind of handy, is that um, if you're in need of names for heroes and other characters, they have a chart that you can roll off of, at least in the case of the Horns of Hashhead. Yeah, they have it for... They have it for all of them? Yeah. So it's cool. If you have a D10 and you you're not very good at naming characters, you can roll off and give them first and last names. I got a couple that ended up with the same last name, so they'll all be in the same family. Okay. And lots of interesting stuff. I think that's neat. And then there's certain missions where you would use an actual battle plan already set up, or we can do like we did in open play and then 
uh, set up the map that way and do get glory winning that way. Right. So right now we're just starting off, and my for to get my quest, I have to do my gruesome harvest. So I got to kill you and do a double to get vials from you, right. and then that goes towards my quest. I believe your quest, if you remember, if you it, I have to it, I get something for winning, and then I get something for being the attacker. Yeah. Also. So you want to win the attack roll when you get right and. So, right off the bat, we'll roll to see who's the attacker and defender. Okay. So, I roll a four. I rolled a three. So, I want to be the attacker because I don't want you to get your two extra bonus points. Right. So, I'll be the attacker. Okay. So, then you'll split up your teams in your hammer, shield, and dagger, and then I will split up my teams. Okay. And then we'll pick the cards. So... This is the group that I've put together for the dagger. Next is these ones are the shield. And these four at the back are the hammer. And I got my dagger was my wither lord there. And your leader's in your dagger too, right? Yes, he is. Okay. And then that's my shield. And then. That's my hammer. So now we gotta set up the battle plan cards. So I'm gonna pick the terrain now. Okay. So we got the terrain set up there. Cool. Oh, we got to use some of the new terrain that we finished up too. Nice. So that'll be the terrain. Then we'll pick the deployment. Battle in the forest. That's new. So there is an actual... I didn't start these roll in random. You didn't have to do them order, But you have to do the terrain setup first, which we did. Yep. Then you got to do the deployment setup, which is the one we picked. And now we roll off to see... Before we pick the twist or the victory conditions, we see who wants to be red or blue. Okay. So I'll roll off. I got a two. I got a six. So who do you want to be? Do you want to be red or blue? Uh, the deployment. Um, I'll be red. Okay. So now we pick the victory condition. Okay. Maybe if we get the boss one again, we'll put it oh, back yeah. in <laughs> reshuffle. Lost patrol. Your foes integrate to interior to capture scout and retrieve secrets, and so they must be rescued at all cost. After deployment, the attacker picks one of the defender's fighters to be the scout. The scout can ha cannot have the beast or hero rune marks, so we don't have any. We're not playing with the jade guys that have the bird, right? Because that's a beast. I don't think anybody else we have. No, we don't have that. But we can't pick our heroes, and they cannot have a wounds characteristics of twenty or more. So that doesn't. We don't have ogres or anything, so that's not going to matter, right? If an enemy warband contains no such fighters, generate a different victory condition. No, we can do that. Yeah. The attacker removes the scout from the battlefield and sets them up on the battle floor within three inches of one or more visible fighters. In the attacker's warband, the scout cannot use abilities or make actions unless a visible fighter in the defender's warband is within three inches of them. Yeah. The battle ends after four battle rounds. When the battle ends, if there are more of the attacker's fighters in the defender's, when the battle ends, if there are more of the attacker's fighters than the defender's fighters within three inches of the scout, the attacker wins. Otherwise, the defender wins. Okay. So we got to. Find a scout, basically, or kill the scout. All right. So that's an interesting one. We'll try that one out. Yep. And then the twist. So what's the twist do we get? Acidic muck. The soil beneath your fighter's feet is actually the exposed stomach of a colossal underground beast. <laughs> and it slowly digests all who walk upon it. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. At the end of each battle round, allocate two damage points to each fighter on the battlefield floor. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> That's interesting. So look, we got some terrain on this one, so you don't want to be on the floor. Nope. Huh. And that's going to be interesting with the scout, too. So Absolutely. So we'll set up the map and set up where we're putting our dagger, shield, and hammer, and then we'll start off. So we set up our deployment and the terrain. This is the one piece of terrain we haven't finished yet, but we're working on doing that one. We actually built it today and primed it. Yeah, it'll be ready soon. And we set up, uh, we have round two 
units are your daggers coming in round two. Yep, and so is yours. You can uh, my daggers coming in yet round two over there too. Yeah, you can see them back there. And your both our leaders are there. Yep. Uh, I picked the scout for the Lost Patrol. I picked your flame guy. Yeah. And put him over here because I got to put him within three inches of my unit. Yep. And then he can't do any abilities or anything. Yeah, really. move actions or abilities as. Unless someone's free, if unless someone's in your warband, it's free and just close to him. Right. So I put him away, so then you can't get to him. Yeah. Hopefully I'll block him off. And then we got to remember at the end of the battle round, we take two damage if we're on the floor because the ground is acid. Yeah. We should get a save to that because we have stilts and stuff, but <laughs> they're used to it. Uh, I think that's it, really. Yeah, at the end of battle round four, if I have more people close to your scout, I win. If you have more people close to him, you win. Yep. And I'm not going to try to kill the scout, because then if he's not on the board, I'm not going to get points. Right. Or if I kill him, you won't get points, and it would be a tie game. That's so if true. I think that's going to happen, that's something I could do, too. If I, Yep. Uh, I could go up to the horn, too. We haven't discussed that too much, even in the last game. If I'm up one inch close to the horn, mm -hmm. I can roll a triple. If I get a triple ability, I roll that many dice, what the score is. And if I roll... So for each four, you can bring off someone on reserve. Nice. But they're coming around two. Ah, he fell off. I don't know if I'm going to try to run up there and do that anyway. Okay. But I know I'm going to try to stay off the ground, though. Yeah, me too. But i got to go get that guy, so. Yeah. Okay. So we'll roll our initiative dice. Yep. Can you go first? Oh, I got trip fives already. And a double and a single. And because of my leader having the ability resourceful, I start with one wild dice at the start of the battle. All right. I also got triple fives. That's funny. Nice. And you can use Inspiring Presence for free because of your trait, right? Yes. Once, once per battle. Per battle. And then. You got free singles? I did. So you have initiative. So you get you get to pick what you're going to do with your wild dice. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn that four into a double. One, and then... You have two singles, so you still have initiative. Yeah. So I get one free wild dice because of my ability. And I also get a wild dice... Because we all got one at the start of the battle round. Right. So you have... Ooh, I can get initiative if I want. I can give it to you. I am going to make that... Free... Uh, triple. And... I'll keep the four as a single. So we'll roll off four okay. initiative. So... I roll the three... What did you roll? So you rolled a three. I rolled a five. So you get initiative. Okay. So I'm going to activate this dude here who is a demolisher with crushing weapons. Okay. And I'm going to move him. He's going to go four... This way. And then Is another? another four. Over here. Now if you use a double, I know a universal is you can add to your movement. No, I don't think he's gonna do that. Okay. But he is gonna use I am gonna use the triple. And what's that do? To do ash bomb. Can he so, do ash bomb? Uh, he has the symbol. Yeah, they can. I guess everyone in your warband... I'm not used to your warband. Oh, no, the peons can't, but the other ones can. Yeah, that's what they have on their... I think they have them on their belts. I think the so. The ones that are painted blue, those are their ass bonds. Yeah. So, I have to pick a visible point within six inches of the spider that is on the battlefield floor or a platform and place a token there. That token is an ash bomb token. So, within six inches of me, I'm going to place... Ooh, wait. 
actually, to do a finag some finagling under here, I'm going to place that ash bomb right there. So, now anyone who is within three inches of the ash bomb. What is that free there? Is minus one, uh, minus one toughness and minus one attacks. And that's the end of the battle round. Cool. And that was your ability, right? And you've moved yep. twice? Yep. So it's over to me. Yep. I'm going to activate this guy. Okay. And I'm going to do my blowpipe. I'm going to use my triple for a double. All right. So it's fives. And pick an enemy visible of six inches of this fighter and roll two dice. For each four, allocate the number of damage points to that equal to half of this ability. So it's five, so it's going to be three damage. All right. So I got to roll two dice for each four. I roll a one and a four. So I do three damage to that guy. And if I rolled any sixes, I would subtract one from the toughness. Okay. So he gets three damage. And that was my ability. Uh, he's now going to move. And he has range of two, so I'm going to stay two away from you. Okay. And now I'm going to attack you. Okay. So he gets three dice. And he has strength four. Uh, because of the ash, is he within three inches of the ash bomb? Oh, yeah, so if I moved up, actually, yeah, so I, he's actually going to, he could move closer. He's going to get closer to you and get away from the ash bomb. Okay. So, three attacks. Strengths four. All right. That's a crit. And what's your toughness on your demolisher? Toughness is four. So we're the same. So I wound you on fours. Okay. So that's a wound. So it's two wounds plus five because five's crit. Oui. So seven damage total. So he's at ten. Okay. How much life does he have? Twelve. Oh, at the end of the battle round, he's going to take two damage. He is. Oh. A fighter can use... Do I have a double? If I do Gruesome Harvest, that goes towards my quest, too. Right. Cool. So, uh, he's done. And it's over to you. So I'm going to activate this dude here, the one of the Shatterers. And he's going to move for this way. And then move, oh, bumping in the board, another four this way. And then he's done. Okay. So I'm going to activate him, and he's going to move up four. Okay. I have a triple. I'm not going to be able to do Gruesome Harvest. Okay. So I'll still go over there. I'm good. I'm going to use that for my blowpipe. Okay. And try to... He's going to die anyway. So I'm going to try it on your shadow. All right. So I'll use a triple as a double. Okay. Or, oh no, I don't have an extra... I could have used it for Rush to have an extra inch to attack, but then I wouldn't have any more dice left to do a double to do Gruesome Harvest. Right. So he's just going to do that. Do a blowpipe. i got to roll two dice on a four plus. You take two damage. So... Because it's three, so it's one and a half, and you round up. So two damage to your Shatterer. All right. And he's just going to stay there. He's done. Okay. So he's got two sides. So I'm going to activate my Ruinator. It's over here. So we already measured it out before. That's four up to this platform. So you're going to scale up to the platform? So he's going to come up here. He... 
<laughs> and this giant helmet doesn't get under the tree. Yeah. So he's going to move another four, which will get him over here. Try not to knock things over with his giant bull horns. So he would be here. Okay. And that's it. That's so all he's, he's doing. Done. Cool. So he's up in there. I'm going to activate this guy with the skull hell. Okay. And he's going to move basically up to the platform for his first action. For a second action, he's going to jump out off the platform. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is new. I haven't done this yet. Jump to here. And then he has nowhere to land, so he falls on the floor. Okay. So now i got to roll to see if I take damage. All right. On a four better, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. On a one, I would take three damage. Okay. On a two to three, you take one damage. And on a four plus, nothing happens. All right. So he's good. Awesome. But at the end of the battle round, he's going to take damage from the acid floor. Yep. Just trying to get everyone around that guy. I only get points if I'm three inches close to him too, right? Right. So I don't even I can't even get up on those tower up there to get the points. Yep. Okay. And he did two things, so he's done. So it's over to you. Alright. So I'm gonna activate this shatterer that's back here. Okay. And he's gonna move. He's not gonna go quite the four, but he's gonna go three to here. And then four up. Yep, I think it's like free to get to the platform and another inch gets you up there. Yeah, so he's up here. And that's his turn. So I'm just going to double move my guy with a blowpipe. And you can move eight. So he's just going to go right back there. Mm -hmm. What's that guy? Okay. I don't know why there's two activation tokens, but there we go. He's done. Okay. Oh, the ass bomb. The, no, it's my toughness and my attacks, not my movement. No. Okay. Doesn't affect it. So he's done. Over to you. Okay. So I'm going to activate this demolisher with crutching weapon. Okay. He's going to move four. Ah. That way. You go back to where you were. And then I'm going to use my double to you do Stampede of Iron. Until the end of this fighter's activation, the next time this fighter finishes a move action within one inch of an enemy fighter, pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter and roll a dice. On a four to five, allocate one damage point to that fighter. On a six, allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. And, and the ability is four? four. Okay. Yeah. So he's gonna move again. He's going to move right on top of that damage counter. Okay. So, is anybody within an inch? Doesn't look like it. No. No. That's okay. Hey, you tried. Yep. And then he's done? Yep. Okay. I am going to take this guy. Mm -hmm. And he's going to move here for his first four and he's going to scale up there okay and he's done so he's just hiding up there and then back we didn't see him cool so you got your last demolisher there yes i do he's gonna move for his first activation right over here and then next one he's gonna move over here okay and that's it that's all my guys so i got my one guy up there this guy is just gonna wait there okay i won't put the wait token because it's not gonna matter because i'm not gonna do a reaction because no one's coming yeah the other guy is just gonna shift he has eight movement if i double move right and just go here i'm gonna try to build a wall so you can't get past oh, okay because you can't move through units unless you have fly. And I don't think many of your guys fly. Right? No. I know the Cypher Lords can jump and fly over people. That'd stuff. be awesome. But he's done. 
he was waiting, but there's no one else to do anything. So I get to activate him again because yeah. he waited. Right. Nothing happened. So now I can activate him again. Nothing's going to happen. So he's done. He's not doing abilities or anything. Okay. So that's the end of the round. Yeah. So at the end of each battle round, allocate two damage points to each fighter on the battlefield floor. Okay. So where it's going to matter is this guy who has 10, they only have, the demolishers only have 12 life, right? Yes, they do. So he dies. I don't get, I didn't slay him, the ground did. Yep. But at the end of the battle, because we're doing the campaign, you'd have to roll on the injury table. He might hurt himself. Okay. So we'll put him aside that he's dead. And then everybody else that's on the floor will take two damage, including your skill. Yeah. And then we'll do the initiative phase after that. Okay. And then the reinforcements will come in. So we need to get more wound tokens. So we use some dice for twos till we, we get did. to the free token one. Yep. Yeah. But well, everyone's get... taking damage that's on the floor. Yep, yep, yep. We lost your guy that... Yep. Got... My one guy. No good there. Answer. Now so we're rolling... For initiative for me. Yep. Ooh. Ooh. Sixes, I like that. Is that... Oh. So I got... Triple, double sixes I like, and then a single. So, it'll go over to yours now. I got a triple. Triple ones isn't that great, but that's okay. It's still a triple. Your triple quad, your quad fours killed me last game. <laughs> and it was all ones. And I got one single. So you... Oh, you had two threes there? I thought you were... No, it's two threes. Oh, you had... Okay, I saw there was a three and a two. Okay. No, two threes. So we're both tied for initiative. Yeah. So we'll roll off. Do you want to roll a dice? I rolled a four. Okay. And... Roll two. two. So you get initiative. Okay. So what are you going to do with your wild dice? Um... I'm going to keep it. Okay, so you're not going to add it? No. Okay, so you're going to store it then? Yes. Yeah, I think that's the first time we stored it. So I'll take my dice. So I can seize the initiative if I... And I think I'm going to. I'm going to make this wild dice of one. So I have two initiative now. So I'm going to go this time. All right. Uh, our... Take those signals away. You kept your wild dice for next turn, right? Yes, I did. Now, my reserves would come in. Okay. Three inches horizontally of that. So they're there. They still get to go. And then your guys are going to come in on this battle edge. Yep. Three inches. Right there. Is that where you want? They're going there? Yes. Okay. And then I would get to go first. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do round two, I'm going to activate my carrying catcher with impaler. That guy? Yeah. Okay. And I am going to swing at you. So I will free dice. You're going to swing at the one you're in combat with, I'm assuming. Yeah. Well, okay. I could hit that guy because I have a range of two. Yeah. But I want to try to do... Ooh, would I kill him right away? I said I don't want to kill him and not be able to do Grim Harvest. Uh, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna keep that for the blow pipe. I'm not gonna use the claws. I'm gonna use my triple twos. Okay. To use for grim gruesome harvest. Okay. So a fighter can use this only if the fight. Oh, okay. I can do it after he's been killed. I don't have to do it before he's killed. Okay. Right. That's good to know. I don't know if I have to activate it, then kill them to get the vial. Ah, right. But I can okay. kill them. Use it after I kill them. Okay. Hopefully. If you kill them. Yeah. Three dice, strengths four. I need a crit, crit. Uh, what's the toughness on your shatterers? Three. Three? So I wound you on a three because I'm strengths four. Right. So those are all wounds and they're two damage apiece. So two, four, six. He has two damage on him already. So he's at eight. He, mm -hmm. needs, he has ten wounds in total. So he has five, six, seven... Eight. He has eight wounds now. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to do that again. Okay. And hit him. Need to freeze. 
That's a three. Yeah, even if I can re-wolf it. I don't have to. <laughs> again. So, he's dead. Yep. So, I would kill him. Take him off the board. So, I think I'm naming him Hook right now until I give him an actual name. All right. So, Hook killed one person. And now I'm going to use my triple twos to use it as a double gruesome harvest. Okay. A fighter can use his ability only if an enemy fighter that has been taken it out by a melee attack by this activation. So he did? Yep. This fighter now has a potent veil until the end of the battle. Okay, until the end of the battle. While the fighter has a potent veil, when they use an ability, the value of the ability is treated as being a six, even if it shows a different score. Nice. So, what am I going to put? I'm just going to put a little weight symbol on Hook's card. So that I know he has a veil, because it kind of okay. looks like a veil or something, until we find something to use as a veil token. Yeah. So now whenever I use an ability, it counts as a six. Cool. So when he uses his blowpipe, even if I roll trip once, it's going to count as a six. Yeah. And part of my quest is to do Gruesome Harvest. Every time I do Gruesome Harvest, it's one point I get towards my quest. Cool. So I'm just going to put on my quest log that I got one point so far. Nice. Track those. And... He's gone. Okay, now it's over to you. Okay, so first I'm going to activate for the first time this battle, because he just got on the table, the Ruinator Alpha with the Bident. Not Trident, Bident. Okay. Uh, first thing he's going to do is he's going to move forward. Okay. Four. So up here. And okay. then he's going to use... The double. I have double threes to do Stampede of Iron. Uh, keep in mind that your Inspiring Presence is an ability, right? Yes, but it doesn't... It doesn't cost you ability dice, but you can only do one ability an activation. Oh, right. Because we were talking off camera that you wanted to do Inspiring Presence. Yeah. Inspiring Presence you get for free because of your trait. But it's still an ability. It's still an ability. It you, just doesn't cost me dice. Yes. Okay. So you can only That's do ability per activation. Okay. If you wait, you can do an activation. Then on your next activation after your wait, you can do it. That's the way you get two, effectively two abilities per turn. Right. Okay. But he's going to move. Again? Another four. Yep. Okay. Where's he going? Over here. And then he is finished. But because he is within six inches of my leader, I'm going to use my inspiring presence. Your free one. The free one to activate him. What's that skill called too? So people, if they didn't. A uh, skill commander. It's my heroic trait. Okay. So doing that now, and he gets two activations with inspiring presence. Yep, because right? you get. You're basically activating another fighter that hasn't activated yet. You're getting two turns out of one, basically. Yeah. So. He's going to move. Because you're out of one inch. Because you're not locked in combat with anyone. You're just out of an inch, right? Yeah. Because if you're within one inch of someone, you can't move. You're locked in, so you have to do a disengage action. Right. But he's going to move that inch in to him now. Okay. And then he's going to attack. And you're attacking Hook? Yes. So you get four attacks with the demonster? And they're only strengths three. I thought they were strengths four. No, they're toughness four. Okay. So, and it does two damage or four if it's a crit. Okay. So, two hook. Nice. Uh, your strength is three. My toughness is four, so you need fives to wound. Okay. But you got two fives already. Yeah. And a crit. So, how much damage is that? So, the crit is four, and then the fives are two. So, eight. Nice. And I have two on hook already, so he has ten damage. Okay. How many does he, the wounds does he have? Hook there? has, oh, only twelve. Okay. They're not beefy, my guys. They can hit the ones with the hooks a little hard, but they only have 12 wounds. All right. It's not like an ogre. I think ogres have. Some of them have like 25 wounds or 30 wounds. They're nuts. Yeah, but there are a lot of points. They're like 200 plus points, some of them. Yeah. So he's done, and I have 10 wounds on hook now. Okay. Okay. I'm going to use my Merfolk Outcast with firewood weapons. Okay. That guy. All right. And he's going to use a blowpipe with my double. And I'm going to shoot at your demolisher. All right. So it's sixes. I roll two dice on fours. Come on, fours. 
Oh, boo. If I were to roll a four, it would have been free damage. And a six, I would have rolled your toughness. Okay. So I'm that was his to. ability. I have no ability dice left. I am going to move. He moves four. And he's going to get out of here. Are you running? Sorry, Hook. Four here. And four back here. I learned from my last match not to go toe to toe to you too much as you run up on me. They basically, you guys get stronger on the charge, right? You don't want to get charged by that, really. No. Because of your stampede stuff and everything? Yep. So as they're getting close to them so they can't charge you or run away. Uh, yeah, and he's done two things. He did his ability. So he's done. Over to you. So I'm going to activate the demolisher with the shield. Oh, I didn't even see it it's on the other side. Yeah, that's your toughest five guy. Yep. So I'm going to move them four over here. And then I'm hoping I'm probably not. Oh, I'm just out of one. Oh, boo. Okay. Um, I'm going to move another four. Over there. And then that one's done. Okay. Because I couldn't get to you. So I'm going to activate this guy. Okay. And he's going to basically move up to the top here. So he's going to scale. How am I going to do that? I think. Yeah, because he would scale up the pole. Or is that four? Oh, I gotta check because we just built this one. We don't even know. Is that four? Because he only has movement of four. Might be a little bigger. Nope, it's just, it's over top. Okay. So if you only had free movement, you couldn't get up there. So he's moving there for one. Okay. And then his second move, he's just gonna come over to the top there. Okay. Actually, he's gonna go. He's playing in some shenanigans. Just closer anyway. There. He is. Hopefully. Because the guys with two weapons. Yeah, they got blowpipes too. So he's going to just stay up there and guard. Okay. And that's him. So I activated my Ruinator. I moved him. His first move got him in there. And then second move gets him over here. Um, I We did it off camera because he kind of got stuck. And didn't want it to... Anyway, so he moved over there, and that's the end of his turn. He's not doing any abilities or anything? No, no, I don't know if there's... There's not really much of a point at this point. Okay, so it's over to me. Okay, so since you're on the rope bridge, and you can destroy rope bridges if you use the terrain for it... Yeah. The rules for it, so I'm going to try it. So I'm going to move up. I'm going to move up the four, and with, if you're within one inch of a rope bridge, you can attack it. Okay. So you roll three dice... And on a six, you weaken it. If you roll two sixes, you destroy it. Once a bridge is weakened, nothing happens. It's just people have to be careful of it, they say. Right. But once you roll two sixes on it, it's broken and you remove it. Anyone that's on the bridge falls down. And for impact damage, they roll three dice instead of one. Okay. If they can't be put anywhere vertically lower, yeah. they're taken down, so they die. Okay. So I'm going to roll out. Oh, and if you have a strength characteristic of five or more, you add one to the dice. Okay. So... I don't have, no one, my guys aren't that strong. No. Okay, so, I'm looking for sixes here. None. So, that was an action though. So he moved and did that, so that was his action. He's done. Okay. My other guys can try it too. Okay. Okay, so, that's their action. It's over to you. So, we're going to activate this shatterer. First thing he's going to do is move. So he's going to go four inches that way. And then I was going to use my double to do merciless cruelty in the hopes that, oh, you are not in two inches. No. Nope. 
So that's okay. I already said I was going to do it before I measured it. So we use the double and then I'm going to move him along. That didn't work out. So he did one move and then he's going to do again? Yeah. So he'll get over there. Okay, he's done. That was his two. So. Are we going to try to cut the rope again? <laughs> yeah, so like on the other side. Yeah, let's get skull mask here. He's going to move up the floor. He's going to go there. Did I not notice he has a skull mask? Call him Skeletor. Yeah. Play guitar. There you go. Two dice. Oh, three dice. Sorry. I'm looking for sixes. All right. Six. Ah, nothing. <laughs> Worth a try, though. Yeah. Oops. And that's his turn. Over to you. So I'm going to activate my last shatterer here. And I'm going to use one of the universal abilities. I'm going to use my triple as a double. And I'm going to, which, and Rush gives him one more to his movement. So it turns his movement from a four into a five. So five will get him onto this platform. And then I'm going to act, do another movement for him. So we'll just get him. I'm not going to put him on the bridge yet. You're afraid that I'm going to cut it down or something? Yeah. We'll just get him right in there. The two inches. And that's it. That's so it's it over to me. So you have no more activations left. No. So I'll do some of mine. I'm going to move up here for four. And then he's going to scale and go here. Okay. So he's done. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take this blowpipe guy. He's going to go four and there. So I'm just going to put him basically right in front of him. He's going to double move. Okay. He's done. That one's already gone. Then I'm going to use my leader. He's going to double move. Okay. I can see him. And then Plagarine's going to come over here. He, he double moves to there. Okay. And he's going to double move right behind Plagarine. Okay. Oh, you know who you forgot? Who did I forget? This guy hasn't activated yet. Oh. So you forgot about your one demolisher over there? What's he going to do? Yeah. Um, I think he's just going to scale up. Let me see. Make sure it's four. Up to that platform? Yeah. I think it's probably... Oh, yeah. It's three in a bit. Okay. So. Pop him up here. Wounds. And then that's it. He's done. Okay. So that's everybody? Yep. So everyone that's on the floor is going to take two damage. So we'll do that first before the end of the round. Okay. So Hook's going to take two damage and he only has 12 life. So he's going to be dead? Yep. I still get the point for the vial though because it's whenever I trigger the ability right and then everybody else is going to take two damage no one's going to die from it so we'll put the damage counters on there and then we'll move to round three okay so we put all the guys damage on the floor now use some dice too because we don't have enough tokens yeah it's starting to stack up yeah people are getting four damage now on the floor yeah okay so I'm going to roll for my initiative dice okay I got Double, another double, and oh, all doubles. That's all blowpipes. <laughs> so, and over to you. So, 
So I got a triple and three singles. So you definitely have initiative. So you'd get another wild dice. Yes. What are you going to use it with? You can use the one you store to. So I'm going to turn the six into a double. You have no initiative. Nope. You're still winning right now. Um, Even if you made another one, another double, or you made one a quad, you would still be beating me by initiative. Because I'm going to get one wild dice. Also. Um. Yeah, I'm going to turn the five into a quad. Okay. And you have two initiative. My wild dice, even if I put that, I'm not going to get initiative. So I'm going to make one. I'm going to make the four into a triple. Okay. And then you would have initiative. So I activated this demolisher with shield and crushing weapon. And I double moved. Yeah, you're back there. So you moved up twice. Yeah, trying to get to my flame guy. Yeah, you're Hopefully. still not within three inches to activate that. No, I think this is going to be a case of see how fast we can run to him. Yeah, I had to... Deployment in my event is being able to put that in that corner. Yeah, I agree. So I'm going to activate. I'm going to activate my Wither Lord. Okay. He's going to move four. So you are just wasted one. So I'm going to use my triple for lethal objection. Okay. <laughs> so pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter. There he is. Visu your guy up there is from the bottom of the base vertically up, so you're... I couldn't lead to inject a new leader, unfortunately. Right. It's not from the top of his helmet. No, that's from the base. That's not my leader. That's the. Oh, ruinator. I keep yeah. He's a ruinator, but yeah. he's not the ruinator alpha. Right. Okay. The alpha has the bident. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm gonna pick the one with the shield, the yep. tough one. Yeah. So, pick a you're within one inch. Roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. For each roll that exceeds the toughness characteristics of that fighter, allocate five damage to them. Your toughness is five. Yep. So I got to roll four dice. So there's, when I get a quest and stuff too, or different hero traits, I can make that even better. Oh, that's a good idea. So roll knife equal to the value. So the value was four. Each will like cease toughness. Okay, so come on. Crits here. Oh, I got one. So is it exceeds the toughness? Or number of dice equal to the for each one that exceeds the toughness carries a graphite. Ah, boo. So fives would have done the four, but nope, I already get the six I had to roll. Okay. So it does five damage to you. Okay. So if I would have rolled all toughness would have been if I would have attacked you, it would have been better just to attack, but that was ability anyway, because I moved once, I used at least one injection, and I can still attack you after. Yeah. So that's five. Uh, allocate five damage to them. Okay, yeah, so five damage. All right, so now he's got seven in total. Five, six, seven, yeah. Now I have one action left. I'm going to attack you. What's the range on him, too? Two inches. Yeah. Because he has a hook. Yeah. I was going to say, God. So I could actually swing it up there and hit you. <laughs> but because you're in cover and you're above, your yeah. toughness goes up by one. Ah, okay. So you'd have the same toughness as your shield guy. Right. Your shield guy on the bleach has six toughness, which is pretty good. That's crazy. Or in cover. Uh, so four dice, strength four, your toughness five. So I need fives. All right. Because you're one of them. Ah, there's one. So it does three damage normally. So you're at 10 damage total. Okay. How much life does shield... Shield guy has 12. So unless I get him on something, he's cooked next round. Oh, he's already activated. So he is cooked next round. Oh, yeah. So he is cooked. The reason... I want to try to do another... Because what's cool that I... All my guys in my warband can do Grimm's... The Harvest one. That's cool. So even like the little peon guys can do it, right? Cool. So that was my second activation. So he needs a 10. Yeah, I gotta put a 10 down there. There we go. So over to you. So 
I'm going to activate my Ruinator. He's going to come down. And I measured it out. It's about two and a half inches. He's just dropping and jumping? Yeah. He's going to come down here. And then he's going to attack your boss. So how many dice do you get? So four. He's going to attack with four dice. How much is strength? Four. So I need... My toughness is four. So I need four. Nice. Awesome. So his regular attacks do two and crits do four. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice. So I have ten damage now on my Wither Lord. And he has 20 life total. Okay. And then before he's done, I'm going to do use my quad, and I'm going to do Unleash the Raging Taurus. And what does that do? It is, this fighter makes a bonus melee attack action. In addition, add one to the damage points allocated by each critical hit scored from that bonus attack action. So on your crits, you do more damage, not your normal hits. Yes. Okay. So on my crits, I would do five. So this is for your activity. Bonus melee attack action. Ooh, that's all wounds because, oh, wait, the same? Yeah, you need fours. Yeah. So the crit gets an extra, so that's five. Yeah. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, and he has ten. He has twenty life. You killed my leader. Wow. I didn't expect that at all. Yeah, my leader <laughs> is kind of squishy. So he's done. So hopefully I didn't lose my leader off the bat. He'll still have to roll for... If he gets injured, and then I might have to get a new leader when we see. Okay. Yeah. That's why I want that staff if I do the quest, because then I'd be tough as five. Oh, well, wow. Yeah, that'd be really... And plus one movement. Yeah, that'd be really good. So those fours wouldn't have done anything to me, right? Yeah. Okay, so he's done. So it's over to me. I'm going to get Plagarine, and he's going to move up to be just an inch away. And that guy? Okay. For his first activation, his second activation... He's going to attack you with his claws. So it's five attacks. I think okay. this is the first time I've actually got him in combat. I think so. Yeah, five attacks. Strikes four against toughness five because that's your shield, right? Yep. So I need fives are better. Nice. Ouch. And it does two damage a piece. Crits are five damage. So that kills him? Yeah. So... That one's dead. That's activation. That has gone. So that's a fighter dead. And I'm going to use my double for Grimms from Hobbits. A fighter can use his ability only if a fighter has been taken out down by a melee attack, which is done. Yep. And when the fighter has a point of fail, yeah. So whenever I use an ability now with him, it counts as a six. Uh oh. Just like the other one. So now I have. Two veils. So I'll mark on my quest that I've done. Two veils so far. Okay. And then it's over to you. So I double moved my Shatterer up over there by Plagarine. And that's my activation. So it's over to me. Yep. So I'm going to activate my Morphoquist Shield. That's with the one. Skull Mask. Okay. And he's going to attack your Ruinator. All right. So I get three dice. He has range two. This is nice, too. Yeah. Three dice strikes free against toughness on your Ruinator. Four. So I need fives. I'm on crits here. First uh, crits. Nope, but I needed five, so that's one damage each. So he takes two damage. Okay. That's his first two, because he's been up. Yes, he has. He just came down to kill your boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My boss keeps dying. Uh... I am going to do that again. Can my doubles do no blow tight? Nope. Okay. Back again. Nothing. Okay. So he's done. I'm not going to use my blowpipe because I have double threes left too, right? Okay. Mm. Nope. So I'm done. Over to you. So I'm activating my Ruinator Alpha. Okay. And he's first going to move 
four. Which we'll get him over here. And then I'm going to do Stampede of Iron, which is a double. Uh, under the end, until the end of this fighter's activation, the next time this fighter finishes a move action within one inch of an enemy fighter, pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter and roll a dice on a four to five. Allocate one damage point to that fighter on a six. Allocate the number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. And I have double sixes. Nice. So he's going to move. And that will get him here. And should put him. Yeah, he was in one inch. With... Okay, so. Rolling a dice. Gotta get a crit. Come on, crit. Ah, blue. Okay, it only does one damage. <laughs> Is it, do you have to roll? Oh, no, it's a four, four or five. Does no damage. Never mind. So your turn's done? Yep. Okay, so it's over to me? Yep. So I'm gonna disengage from your Ruinator Alpha because I'm missing one. All right. So I gotta move three back. I'm gonna wait for you now. Okay. If you had a reaction, you could have done strike them down, but you have no reactions. You have no actions left. Right. So that was my disengage action. My next action. This will go right there, right next to him. Okay. And he's done. So I double moved one of my other demolishers with crushing weapons up there. And that's my activation. I'm going to activate this Merfolk with Sealed. Okay. I'm going to use my double to do Blowpipe Set P on here. Okay. So I need fours, and if I hit, it does two damage. All right. For each four. Nothing. So that was that. And then he has two things left. First thing he's going to do, because he has range of two, it's going to swing at your Ruinator. All right. So that's three dice. Strikes three, so I need fives. Crits. Nothing? Okay. Uh, second thing, he's going to do it again. Okay. Come on, fives. There's a five. Uh, there's a crit. On a crit, he does four damage. Okay. Well, that's peon, right? They've got no, that's not the peon. I'm attacking your Ruinator. Oh, okay. Okay. So, I'll take off that one. So he has six damage total on him now. All right, he's got 15 life. Okay. Six damage. So he's gone. Now it's over to you. So I double moved that Chatterer. Wasn't quite the full double move, but still did two movement over onto that platform. And that's my activation. So I'm gonna jump off this platform with this guy. So he's going to move four first and then jump down. Okay. Right there. So that's first activation. Let's see if he gets impact damage. Two, so he takes one point of damage. So he has three damage total on him now. He has one more activation. He's just going to move right there to block you from going through. Okay. And that's him. So I double moved my last demolisher with crushing weapon onto the bridge. And that's, he's my last guy. So the guy that's went up here is going to jump off the top. Okay. I'm going to jump four, which is here. And then you fall straight down. Now, he didn't fall, he jumped, so he takes impact damage from jumping. Okay. If he fell, it'd be something different. That's what I was checking. Right. So he moved. Let's roll the dice. It doesn't say from you do more impact damage from a higher height, which is weird. You'd figure if you jump from way up here, you'd do more impact damage. Yeah, you'd think that. But he rolled good, so he's a ninja. Yeah. And I'm just going to wait, which will effectively end my turn. Put that right there. Okay. Keep all my guys in front of him so you can't get there. Yeah. And 
Oh, you you already done all your activations, right? I am. Okay, so then my next activation, which I only have left. Oh no, I have two. I still have this guy. Yep. The one that's right next to the flamethrower. Yeah, he's just gonna stay there. He's gonna wait. No one's gonna happen, so he's done. Okay. Then my carrion is just gonna move. Hiding back there. Jesus. And go here. <laughs> So, that's the end of round three. Uh, I don't know if anyone's going to die from the poison on the floor. <laughs> Only your two guys are up there that are safe. Yeah. So we'll do the damage from the acid. And then we'll take away the markers and do round four. Okay. So, round four now. This is the last round. Yep. See what happens. I want to, oh, that's what I wanted. Oh I, oh, I can still use a quad. I want triples so I can use Wolverine Plague of Range ability. Yep. So, but you got, got a quad. Quad and two singles. Okay, you're gonna roll your dice. That's a two. I got a double, another double, and two singles. So we're tied for initiative now, so we'll roll off. They saw oh, six. There we go. Yeah. So I am definitely taking initiative. Initiative. Well, I'm going to take the initiative. We roll off to see who gets the initiative to put the wild dice first. Right. I am going to make that a one, and I have free initiative because I want to go first. So now you get to decide what you want to do with it. I can do exactly the same thing you did. So we got to roll off again then. Uh, six again. Four. <laughs> nice. Okay, I'm going to go first. Okay. So I'm going to move Plagarine right in the middle because he's not one inch there. Oh, this is going to be fun. And I'm going to trigger his ability. Yeah, I'm going to put him right in the middle. This, this is for me, killing your boss all those times. Twice. You yeah. killed him twice. Three times. <laughs> oh, three times. Oh, we're going to count the test game. game. Yeah. Three okay. times. So he's done one action. Uh-oh. Now... He's going to do slashing attack. Roll a dice for each visible enemy within three inches of this fighter. And that's that's, so, every, that's everybody that's one, on the ground two, right now. Everyone that's around there. Yeah. i not going to say he jumps up and does... That's not even free anyway. So everyone that's around yeah. there, around you roll a dice for. Uh, on a three to four, they take one damage. On a five to six, allocate the number of damage points equal to the value of the ability being rolled for. He has a potent fail, so it counts as a six. Okay. I'm going to use my quad of twos for a triple. So okay. I, I have no ability points left, but it's going to be doing six damage because of my veil. Okay. So I got to roll a one dice for each guy. So let's roll for the Ruinator first. All right. We're looking high here. Ah, uh, so that's only one damage to him. So he's at five, six, seven, eight. He's at nine right now. Okay. Let's roll for the Shatterer. Okay. Well, ah, I wanted that for the... So that's a six out of five to six. It does six damage to him. He has three, four, and six more. It's ten, right? Yeah. Yeah, so he's gone. So he's dead. <laughs> there you go. For your demolisher with questing weapons? Yep. Come on, six. <laughs> <laughs> so that's six damage to him, so that's twelve total. Oh, yeah, he's got 12 wounds. He's done. That's it. Yep, so that's another one. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. He's dead. I think it's hilarious, actually. So, let's go four. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to put some blood splatter on his claws now. Absolutely. That's what we're going to when we were painting them, when we do the campaign mode, if they did something that we add to it, too. Yeah. Put stuff on the base or something. You're going to try do the yeah. alpha now? And then the alpha. This is the one. If I roll three sixes, come on, six, six, six. Holy sh... <laughs> we got it on camera. Yeah, no, we have it on camera. Jesus. So he's angry. Just a six little. Six damage to him. <laughs> I shouldn't have killed the boss. So that He has four, so he has ten. Okay. How much life does he have? Twenty. Ah. That's twenty. That's... He has a Bident. He has twenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> With his Biden. If you would have killed that many people, 
Okay, but that was crazy. Three sixes? Yeah. Okay. He has one action left. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> right, well, five attacks. Oh, your boss is not... No, not are, you, are you within an inch of the Ruinator anyway? Yeah, I'm going to attack the Ruinator. Okay, yeah, you have a better chance. Well, if I, if I had to, I would attack the bot, your Alpha, but I'm two away. Mm. The Claws are only one inch. You have a better chance of killing the Ruinator anyway. He only has 15 wounds. And he's just got... What, like seven on him now? Yeah. I don't know, lots. So, five dice. One, two, three, four, five. Strength's four. What's the toughness on the Ruinator? Four. So I need fours. Twos and fives. If you roll sixes again. Come on, you got this. <laughs> Holy God. That's five sixes in that many rolls. Jesus. You're like, going to paint this bone claws gold? And maybe we're going gambling later. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Holy. Well, the other ones didn't hit. Cheese and crap. He, he just wants sixes. Goodness. So that's 10 damage. Well, how, many, how many does he have on him now? Uh, five, eight, nine. So 10 more, 19. Oh, yeah. No, he's done. Because he only has 15 wounds. He's done. <laughs> so he's definitely the MVP. For sure. Yeah, he's killed. I'm keeping track just for Kelly. He's killed four people this match. Yeah. And he's done. So, so that's my turn. Yeah. Uh, um. So there is something in the rule book saying that if you want to. Run, you can run if more than half of your warband is gone. Yeah, I'm it running. Counts, all your fighters count as taken down, but the ones that are still alive don't count for, uh, you don't roll any injury table for them. Okay, yeah, I'm running. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm running. What I'm going to check, though, is if they're taken down, do you get to roll on, because at the end of the battle, anyone that survives gets to roll for getting renowned. Yeah. Which means basically your fighter is getting more stronger. Right. If their count is just taken down, I don't think they get to roll for renown because you ran away like a coward type of thing. Right? Oh, boo. Okay. So I'm going to check that. So it says at the start of the initiative phase, you can choose a free, but we're going to play out that uh, we'll just call it now because you can't get more people close to him. Nope. And even if we were to play it out and like try to run you down, it's still your turn next. You could always just use your double and rush and just run away from me after seeing Plagarine just murder like four people. Yeah. So he would run. I would go. I could try to pin one down and then they could run and then they're just going to flee anyway. So there's no way of playing it out. Yeah. So we'll just call it now that I would win. Mm -hmm. So we'll do the aftermath next because after you do a campaign battle, you roll to see about glory, getting more points, building your war band more. Right. So we'll do that next. Okay. So we're going to do the aftermath sequence now. Okay. And we got to pick... The first thing we do is gain glory. So in this step, your warband will gain glory, a currency spent upgrading your warband. All right. So play the campaign battle. We each did that. So we each get three glory. Okay. Won the battle. I won it. So I'm at five glory now. The battle was a draw. No, it wasn't a draw. So no. I'll guess that one. Uh, the leader of your opponent's war band was taken down. You killed my leader. Yeah. So you're at four glory. I'm at five. Uh, half of or more of the fighters in your opponent's war band were taken down. I did that one. Yeah. So I'm at six. And then the reputation. We were both at the same rep. But this is what I was talking about before. If someone has a higher rep war band, they get more glory because they beat someone that was a higher reputation. Ah. So for our glory, I got six and you got four. So on our war band roster, I just put... Six, and you have four on your one. Now the next step is suffer injuries. Fighters that were taken down in the battle run the risk of suffering injury or worse. So we got to roll on the injury table, which is on the next page. All right. So everyone that was injured, we roll here to see what happens. Okay. So for each one that was taken down, we roll a D66. So two D6s. Okay. So I'll roll for my, that's the one who wrote it, the leader. Okay. So let's see. Four, five, six. Oh, so 
It's the first one. So 42 will do because that was the first one that came out. Okay. So 42. Flesh wound. This spider suffers no effects. Okay. So he's okay. Cool. And then my... My carrot. Okay. So this will be the tens. Yeah. So 51. Flesh wound. He's okay too. Spider suffers no effects. Cool. So those were my two injuries, so they're okay. So now we'll go for your guys. So you're going to roll for your injured guys now? Yep. The black dice is the tens and the orangey is the ones. So 52. Flesh wound. So he's okay? Next one, 35. What's that one? Lost Renown. So that's 24 to 36. The gods, the gods have watched this warrior's failure with disdain. This fighter loses a level of renown. If they have none, they suffer no effects. So he's okay. That's so for the first demolisher was weapon. Yep. Ooh, six. Oh, that's probably good. Sixty-five. Oh, 65 is flesh wound. If you would roll sixty-six, this fighter gains a level of renown. Ah, uh, close. Close. Uh, so you suffer no effects. All right. Next demolisher. Forty-one. Flesh wound. They're okay too. Everyone's okay so yeah, far. I'm doing so bad. So, the oh, that's ruinator. A, your ruinator. Uh oh, let's see. Two, oh no. 22. Uh oh. So, 22 is broken leg? Yep. Warriors with a damaged leg move slowly but surely, rendering them easy prey for swifter foes. Subtract one from the move characteristic of this fighter to a minimum, minimum of one while they have this injury. And it's a uh, yeah, injury. Okay. So you have to mark down on your character sheet that he has a broken leg. So the guy that has a broken leg. The Ruinator. Yeah. After the next campaign fight we do, you roll for the recovery phase and you can recover your broken leg. Awesome. Uh, if he doesn't, if he's not included in the next fight, he has a better chance to recover. Ah, okay. So I'm going to do my Demolisher with Shield now. Okay. So, 46. That's flesh wound. Okay. Perfect. So, he's so only one there. injury. Well, only one. Minus one movement. Yeah. So, the next step we do is earn renown. Okay. Uh, in this step, you make a renown roll for each fighter in your warband that took part in the battle by rolling a dice. So, even the ones that got taken down and got injured, you roll for them too. All right. Uh, if the fighter was not taken down in the battle, you can add one to the roll. Okay. On a six plus, the fighter being rolled for earns a level of renown. Nice. In addition, you can pick one fighter in your warband to be marked for greatness, even if they were taken down. Make two renowned rolls for that fighter instead of one. Okay. And levels of renown. A fighter can have a maximum of three levels of renown, and we keep a record of it on our warband. During campaign battles, fighters with levels of renown can make three reactions. So that's... You have renown, you can make a free reaction without oh. using your activation. That's cool. Yep. So let's roll for Plagarine first. And I'm going to mark him for greatness because he did so well killing all those characters. Sounds good. So I'm rolling four, one, and then he wasn't taken down, so that would be a five or two. So he doesn't get one. Okay. That guy only rolls one. But he wasn't taken down. Oh, six. So he gains a level over now. Cool. So I'll mark it on my sheet for my fighters. With the names up. And you can mark down that he got a level over now and over there. Right. So I'll mark that down after. There's the skull mask. Four, because he wasn't took it down. Who I've been affectionately calling Skeletor. Yeah. Let's see if he does. Nope. Three. 
Go pipe guy. Nope. <laughs> that guy. Three. That was a couple threes in a row, right? Yep. For this guy. Maybe after after yesterday, all the sixes are out of your system. Three. Nope. And for that one. <laughs> That's a lot of threes. That's a lot of threes. Okay, so now for my leader, I don't add plus one for this because he was taken down. Okay. <laughs> one. Yeah, all the sixes are out after rolling five of them in them. Yeah. And for Hook, who did pretty good at the start. Come on, Hook. Nope. So only one level right now. I got one of my characters. So now we go over to yours. So I'm going to use my Demolisher with Flame Hurler as the one that's marked for right now. So I'm going to roll two. Nope, because you get six. Okay. So we'll do this demolisher. Only one dice this time. Close. Uh, you rolled a five and he survived, so you add one. So that was a six. So he gets a level over now. Oh, cool. Okay. There. We'll do boss man. Nope. Shatterer. Because he survived. It's plus one, so there's another one. Okay, now let's get to the dead folk. Shield. Nope. Demolisher. Nope. <laughs> nope. Pokey stick, as I've been calling him. He doesn't, doesn't get, get plus, plus one because so he's nope. stooking down. And Ruinator. Nope. Ah, too bad. Yeah. That's okay. So you got two guys with Renown. So we're going to mark down on our character seats. We got Renown, and then the next step, we'd further our quest. That's the next step. Okay. So our next step is further our quest. Okay. So this is where you can you upgrade what you're doing on your quest so far. You can give up on your quest too. If you think it's too hard, you can start a new one. And if you complete it. All right. So we'll do my quest first. So I'm doing the one where I'm trying to get the staff, the Fruits of Dark Alchemy. Yeah. So I already tracked that I got two points on my quest log for doing the Gruesome Harvest. Okay. And then in step four, which we're doing now, add two to your progress score if you won the battle. So I did win the battle. So I'm actually at four now on my quest. And when I get to ten, that's when I get to fulfill it. Right. In addition, you can pick one fighter from your warband and send them forth in search of an artifact. If you do so, roll dice and add the score to your progress score. In addition, on a one, the fighter being rolled for is attacked, make an injury roll for them. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to... You want to try that? Yeah, I'll send... That guy up. Okay. So let's roll. I add it to my progress score. Okay. Come on, six. Nope, three. So I add three to that. So I'm at four, five, six, seven. So three more progress, and then I get my staff. I nice. can see the quest. Nice. And they say you can, re unless the quest says it, you can repeat the quest. So I could do the same quest again for a different item, because you can't have two of the same artifact. Oh, neat. Okay. Or you can move on to a different quest. It's not two, right? Right. So I didn't roll one, so he didn't get attacked. And that was my quest. So now we'll go on to your one. In step four, you add two to your progress if you won the battle. I did you not. Did. Add a additional two if you were the attacker. I was not. Unfortunately. And then you can send forth one of your fighters to search for the artifact. And you do so roll a dice and add the score, roll to your progress score. And on the one, you get attacked by something too. Same as mine. All so right. who do you want to send forth? Um... I'll send forth that guy. Okay. So, you want to roll for it? Yep. Two. Ugh. So, you have two to your progress score now for getting the artifact. Okay. So, step five, we can send one of our fighters that hasn't been taken down to look for stuff for like a new encampment or treasure, too. Cool. So, I'm going to send, I already sent 
that guy for the quest before. So I'm going to send this guy to go and search. Okay. So I roll d66 again. So this is tens. All right. I rolled a five. And six. 56. 56. What's that? 55 and 56. Your warrior brings news of an abandoned encampment. It was in a grove of dead Narlocks, one that could be repaired and made secure on your own use. Oh, nice. Location, Dead Knock Grove. This fighter discovers a Dead Knock Grove. You can spend 10 glory to relocate your encampment to this location. <laughs> uh, I only have six, so I can't. So if I had more glory, we would have a new base. Yeah. Which could give us more points so we can have a bigger warband and more rep. So I can't do that. Otherwise, this fighter can search it. If they do so, roll a dice. On a 1 to 2, they find nothing. On a 3 plus, roll on the lesser artifacts table. Oh, nice. So let's roll for the artifact because I didn't find anything. A 3. So on a 3 plus, roll on the lesser artifacts table. So if you found an artifact. Cool. So we go on this page, which is next. And we roll another D66. So 10s. 30. Two. Blight Serpent Venom. Makes sense for these guys being poisoned. Absolutely. Taken from the corpse of one of these deadly vipers, this venom eats through flesh and even armor with terrifying ease. Ugh. Makes sense for them. Yeah. It's a consumable, so consumable lesser artifacts use an accent or a bonus axe to use them. Once the accent has been made, the lesser artifact is immediately removed. Okay. So consumable ones are one time, perishable. You can keep them, but there's a chance that they diminish and get used and they're gone afterwards. Right. So this is a one-time use. The barrel can use this lesser artifact as a bonus action. If they do so, add one to the strength characteristics of a melee attack accents made by them to the end of the activation. Ooh. That's pretty good. Yeah. So. And then I can give that to anyone. Not the guy that search gets it, but anyone in my warband I can give that artifact to. Okay. So I'm just going to mark it down here and later we'll decide where it's going to. Okay. Okay, so now it's your turn to search. So you're sending your Shatterer to go search? Yes, I am. Okay. So, black dice is 10s. 50? 56. You rolled exactly what I did. That's funny. The Narlock Grove. Right. So, you don't have 10 glory, I don't think, right? No. I got 6 four. and you got 4, right? Yeah. So, you look for an artifact. So, do, get... I, do I have to write about discovering them you didn't disc you didn't get it yet because you have to have oh, right. 10 glory okay so i'm rolling the tens first 30. so you roll the freeze so you get to get an artifact yeah so we would switch the page over so you roll d66 and see what you get yep tens black is black dice is tens so 51. 51 is Flask of Aqua, I'm going to try to pronounce this world, Gyranus. You find an entire flask of this precious fluid on a fallen warrior. It is famed across the realms for its ability to rapidly heal wounds. The bear can use this lesser artifact as a bonus action. If they do, remove 3d6 damage points allocated to them. Holy that's crap, that's cool. good. You can heal up to 18 wounds. That's awesome. So we'll write that down and figure out who I'm going to put it on. Cool. So we'll write, keep that updated and then we'll go to the next step. So we did a little talking off screen about how the manager warband yeah. works. So we did. this is where you would... Uh, Recover if you have recovery rolls. You can't do it for the one that broke his leg. You got to wait till next turn. Right. Uh, if you don't go in a fight, you would add plus one. And on a one to three, you don't get healed. On a four plus, you do. Right. Uh, you can also, you draw for Paris rolls if you had items that are perishable, not consumable like the ones we have. Right. And then we add fighters. We might do this off screen again and see and start to of trying to do it on screen, figuring out what we're going to add. We might do that after, and then when we do our next game, we'll show if we added anybody or not. Yeah. And I think in the old one, you could just add allies. Just when you have to do a quest, if we want to add another hero or an ally or Which is a smaller cool. monster. Yeah. So we'll figure that out. And then depending on how much points they are, like I hear a character worth 51 to 100 points costs two glory. 
Right. So if I want to add another Merfolk with Shield, he's 75 points. So it would have cost me two glory if I want to add him. Right. So these you can add whenever, but if you want to add an ally, a monster, you'd have to do a quest to do it. And then your roster limits. You can only start with 15, but you can have a whole roster of 24 in total, actually, if you fill it out completely. Yeah. But you can only have 15 on the board. Right. Or to a minimum of three. Yeah, so it's like you leave some of them at home. Yeah. You're, you're playing, basically. The list. Or you're, yeah. Put them on the reserve, bench. On reserve. Yeah. Uh, managing artifacts. We don't got to worry about that right now. Oh, you can swap around. This is where you would swap around artifacts with people. Right. Uh, remember, a fighter can only bear one artifact at a time, either artifact of power or lesser. So you can't have a super artifact and a consumable artifact or a perishable one. Each okay. person can only have one artifact. Okay, that's good to know. And anyone can have the artifact of power. So I could give that staff to a peon if I really want to. Yeah. <laughs> it's up to you. But uh, And then you would do your reputation. And we did this off screen too. We figured out that we're still at two rep. Because you get one for each hero in your warband. Uh, you get one for each heroic trait, which we both have one. Mm -hmm. And then one for each artifact of power born by your warband. We don't have, I don't have my staff and you don't have your bracers yet. Nope, not yet. And then the lesser ones don't count towards that. Right. So our ones that we just got, my venom and your heal potion, whatever it was. Yeah. Those not count towards it. If we include a monster, which we don't, even though Plague Arena was kind of crazy last week. Absolutely. <laughs> and it's not a beast, it's a monster. So like things like Slaughter Brutes or Vortex Beasts, and I forget what other ones you can get. Giants, those are monsters. Right. And you would get one, uh, depending on what encampment you get, you would add to your rep too. So if we would have been able to get that Darwood Forest encampment, we would have added another rep for having that one. Right. So that was done. And now the next thing we do is we make an encampment check. We have the starting one, the outskirts, so we don't have to roll for this one yet. Once, If we would have got that Narwood one, you'd have to roll to see if people find your base. Right. And there's, you'd roll two dice. If you roll a one, it moves from secure to threatened. If you roll another one, you get to compromise. So if you roll two ones, your base could be compromised right away. Yeah. And then if it's compromised, you lose... The abilities it gives you, you only get 950 points instead of a 1,000 at the start. Yeah. And you, you don't have to make encampment checks after. Right. And then if it's compromised, you can quit your quest and do one of the quests to look for a new base. Yeah. So that's stuff that might come up later once we get a base and stuff. Right now, we don't got to worry about that part. Right. And that's all the steps for doing it afterwards. Cool. For the aftermath. So we got some... I got a cool... Lesser artifacts, so did you. Yeah, I got a cool healing potion. We got... How, I got one Renown. You got two people with Renown, right? I did. So Renown, that's another thing. that the, the Renown doesn't add to your rep. So those two Renown that you got on your characters... Yeah. It doesn't add to your reputation. We're both at two. Yeah. It just means you get a reroll. You can do a free uh, reaction with Renown. Right. Before, I think Renown did stuff, you could have leveled up your characters and stuff. This one, I didn't see that in the book anywhere yet. Right. And I think Renown on your heroes lets you get, if you have two Renown, you can have two traits type of thing. Yeah. But. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so we'll figure out what we'll do with our glory if we want to spend it later. And then next game, we'll see if we got more characters. Or yeah. I'll do that. But, cool. That's a different way of playing it too, building up your war. And you can continually to do it and keep building your warband over and over and over again, right? Yep. And it's doing certain quests and stuff. Yeah, and I think it's fun. Adds more dimension to the game and I think yeah, it's cool. And it was definitely adding the, the twists and everything in this game certainly screwed with some stuff, having the poison floor and Yeah, that was tough with the floor. And then I kinda had the advantage with being able to put your guys in the corner and then you're you lost when you're activations, right? So. Yeah, absolutely. So, but it was fun. So it's like, nice so that even if you lost the, you lost a battle, but you still got glory for it. You still I did. got you got more renown than I did. Yeah, you could still get artifacts. So even if you lose, you still aren't down and out, right? Right. Which is good. And we're even rolling on the injury table. I had so many guys that died, but nothing particularly serious. Yeah, Just the broken died. leg. Broken leg, or you see, yeah. his, his foot got melted off from the acid. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But we'll 
finish this one up, and then maybe next time we'll try what if we get them done the other war bands too. Yeah, that sounds like fun. So thanks for coming out. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.